We've come to Wimmingham to find out more about the town's surprising history. When we look at the last thousand, even two thousand, and even going back three or four thousand years, we can see that the history of Immingham is linked very much with the river. So we find that from Roman times, indeed in the 12th century, boats would land and load their uh, stuff. And it's noted in records that Immingham did have a port of sorts. And then of course, you've heard about the Pilgrim Fathers. They sailed from here as part of their journey. Most of the Pilgrim Fathers came from uh, Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. Some of the ladies and the children sheltered in what was the porch at the church. There are lots of links to the Pilgrim Fathers in Immingham. Lots of our streets are named after the Pilgrim Fathers. And obviously the museum, we set up displays in the museum to commemorate the 400th anniversary a few years ago. You know, it's been, it's been a very important part of the, the history uh, of Immingham. And there's a continual theme running through the history of Immingham. When people ask, what do people do in Immingham? Well, we don't mine coal and we don't make fabrics or whatever, but what we do in Immingham, it could be said, is that we move stuff. With my silly sense of humour, we could say people of Immingham are masters and mistresses of movement. <sighs> right, and that's why there's three M's in Immingham. But the real growth of Immingham really took off from 1906 onwards with the coming of the dock. The story we want to tell here is about the critical importance of the railways to the making of Immingham. There's an underestimation of the importance of the railways and that's one of the themes we try to tell upstairs. The second is the dynamic nature of Immingham. Immingham has always been at the forefront of developments. The railway company, the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway, built and developed Grimsby docks for fish and also for commercial trade, particularly coal exports. But there was a problem with Grimsby, and that was the deep water channel. Anybody who's been to Cleethorpes, invariably the tide's out, so ships had a bit of a difficult time trying to get in. But the railway company realised that the deep water channel touched the coast at Emmingham. So when the tide's out, there's still deep water. Finally, the decision was made to build the docks here. So, 1906, they started building the dock. What they did with the clay, the millions of tons of thick boulder clay, very cleverly, they spread it out on the marsh to stabilize and raise the marsh. So they had a wonderful flat pad to build one of the most modern, efficient docks in the country. The third biggest rail freight yard in the world was built here in Immingham. And to use that famous phrase, not a lot of people know that. But even more than that, they built a power station on the dock. This is 1906. Electricity is only just beginning to get going. You could say this Immingham was one of the world's first electric docks. Then when the migrant workers left after building the dock, we needed lots of workers to drive the trains, handle the freight and so on. Where did they come from? Remember, there's only 200 or so people living in Immingham. Where did they come from? Grimsby and Cleethorpes. And how did we get them here in 1906, 1912? We built a tramway. It's known as a tramway. Let's use the modern phrase. One of the world's first, here we go again, interurban rapid transport systems powered by electricity. Oh boy, this Immingham was right at the forefront of things, yeah? Talk about moving stuff. We were not only moving stuff, we were using the latest technology to move stuff. Immingham became one of the biggest ports by tonnage in the country. It's also the biggest rail freight operation by tonnage. Iron ore, coal, biomass. But the most exciting thing is what's beginning to happen now. 
there's talk of an electric motorway. This country's first electric motorway, there's talk of one of the world's first, or possibly the world's first, bio-aviation fuel plant, building wind turbines, the Freeport. When you add it all together, the next five, 10 years of Himmingham, and let's use that phrase, watch this space.